Brandon had to do problems 45 through 75 for homework tonight. If Brandon did all of the problems he was assigned, how many problems did he do? So there's a temptation here to just say, well, what is 75 minus 45? So you might say, hey, 75 minus 45 is equal to 30. Maybe he did exactly 30 problems. But we have to be very, very, very careful here. And to understand why we have to be careful here, so let me put a question mark right over here. To, 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 to realize why we have to be careful here is imagine, let's do some smaller numbers so that we can really count things out. So let's say instead of 45 through 75, let's say he had to do problems Let's say he had to do problems three, three through six. If we use this technique that we just did up here, we would say, well, six minus three is equal to three. Maybe he had to do three problems. But let's actually count it out. So there's problem one, problem two, problem three, problem four, problem five, problem six. So he did, he's going to have to do problem three through six, including problem three. So he's going to do problem three, problem four, problem five, problem six. When I subtract 6 minus 3, I'm really only caring about problems 4, 5, and 6. I'm looking at how much do I have to go to go from 3 to 6. I'm not including the actual 3. So really, when he's doing problems 3 through 6, he's not just doing 6 minus 3. He's doing 6 minus 3 plus 1, plus 1. He's actually doing four problems. He's actually doing four problems. And you could do this with multiple scenarios to realize when you just subtract, you're not counting, you're not counting the very first problem. You're just counting all the incremental ones after that. So to answer this question, if he's doing problems 30, 45 through 75, it's not enough just to subtract. That won't count the first problem, the 45th. You actually have to add one. So in this case, Brandon does 31 does 31 problems. Let's do another counting problem. A baker has a whole loaf of bread. How many cuts must he make to have exactly seven even slices? Well, you could work this one out directly by trying to cut a, a slice of bread. But let's think about it even if they were to said 70 even slices, a much larger number. What we could do, we could do a little loaf of bread. So if that's our loaf of bread, if you want two slices, two slices, how many cuts do you make? Well, you only make one cut. Two slices, you only make one cut. What if you wanted three slices? So if you wanted three slices, how many cuts do you need to make? Well, you make one cut and you make two cuts. So you make two cuts. And I think you see a pattern here. If we want four slices, four slices, how many cuts do we make? Well, one, two, three cuts. So it's three cuts. And you could go all the way to seven, but you see the pattern. However many slices you want, you only need to do that many slices minus one cuts. So for seven even slices, you only have to do, you only have to do six cuts. And you see why. You don't have to cut, you don't have to cut out that very last piece. It just falls off the edge. Let's do, let's do one more of these. Ishan is building a straight fence with posts one meter apart. If the fence is 18 meters long, how many fence posts does he need? Well, we'll use the same, the same idea. Let's do it with a smaller situation. Let's imagine a, let's imagine a two meter long fence. For a two meter long fence, he's gonna have one fence post, then the fence is gonna go a meter, the fence is gonna go a meter, then he's gonna need another fence post, then the fence is gonna go a meter, and then he needs another fence post. So if you compare it to the cutting bread, you, you kind of have your cut, but you also have to do the ends right over here. So for a two meter fence, he needs three, three posts. What about for a three meter fence? For a three meter fence, well, you're gonna have to have the first post, you go a meter of fencing, then you have the second post, meter of fencing, you have the third post, but you're not done yet, then you have another meter of fencing, and then you need to have the end post right over here. So you see you need four. You need four posts. You essentially need one post at the beginning of each section, and then you need one to finish up. So what you see here is however meters, you're gonna need that many plus one posts. So here, if you're going 18 meters, you're going to need 19 fence posts.